I remember each time he goes to work, I would just look through the window. I just stand. And there was neighbors who would just see me and they would come close to the window and talk to me. I can't speak English. I don't know. Even a word help. I didn't know how to say it. I don't know what to say. They, they, they want to reach out. They will ask me, why are you not in school? The only thing, I, the school I can catch up is almost similar to French, but I can't, I can't respond. I remember the last place we were staying on, and people would ask and ask, this woman, I think she could have helped me or even called the police because I did. She would keep on, she didn't give up. She, she keep on coming and asking him why is this child not at school and I don't know what story he would tell her but she was so angry and each time she would come she would get so angry so I think if you could have stayed there she could have called the police or something and get me home but before I knew it he packed us everything and moved to Cape Town. The Commission was established as a result of a resolution at ACC 16 in Zambia in 2016. Over the last 20 years or so, there had been public disclosures of abuse, uh, sexual abuse, but other forms of abuse in a number of provinces. Uh, our task is threefold. Uh, firstly, we're to identify what policies are currently in place in the churches of the communion. Uh, secondly, we are to develop guidelines to enhance the safety of people in the churches of the Anglican communion. And thirdly, to develop resources for the implementation of those guidelines. Well, you know, the, the, one of the greatest challenges that we face is the culture of silence, you know, in, our, in, uh, in the community. The majority of the population in the Pacific are Christians and the faith is a very important component of, uh, is an integral component of our lives and um, not only that, culture also is and so the culture of silence um, is a very important part of our lives and so we don't uh, speak publicly about abuse. The, the issue is one of where do victims or survivors, people who want to get over this, where do they go for help? Where do they go for assistance? Can they actually come to the church? Or is the church seen as the very institution that has allowed these horrible incidents to happen? And so we need to look within ourselves to see whether or not there are structures, either institutional structures or social structures, which prevent the church from coming to a realization of the risk that these things can happen and that we need to address it up front. We were humbled by the courage um, that the girls were able to come out to speak. Because in many cases, the stigma related to such kind of stories make people, make it difficult for people to come out publicly to say, to tell their story, but to find ways as to how best they can, they can be helped. So the work of this commission is quite important in that regard, in that listening to the stories, we have an idea of what the society in general is going through, and then identify the point at which that the church can then enter and, 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 and assist. I felt that their final plea was, how can I be safe in the church? Developing policies that make everyone safe will help them, but I personally would like to suggest that the church can, in a very practical way, um, parishes can offer support to women who are, who are emerging from abuse, who are trying to leave shelters and need help in transitioning to living on their own, to finding a job, to learning skills to, to get good jobs and, and, and support during the year or after they leave the shelter. Hearing from survivors is extremely important to our work. We need to ensure that we understand the harmful effects that they have experienced and as best we can ensure that 
the guidelines we're developing uh, will prevent that sort of abuse from happening in the future. And where abuse of that nature does happen, that there is proper care uh, for survivors.